Right now, help me welcome Mama Stacy as she delivers the word of the day. Thank you. Amen. Wow, at least you guys are here. You, were, you worked so hard at Sports Fest yesterday, but you're still here, so woo! Come on. That was so exciting. I mean, I love Sports Fest because, you know, I get to see, I don't know, I never play any sports. I just be the cheerleader on the side, you know, and I just cheer everybody on because, you know, I just get so excited just to see everyone, right? So I think for me, it's a different thing. You guys go and you guys are preparing, but I normally try to prepare my voice and then I'm there, I'm screaming. And I noticed now twice in a row after Sports Fest, I had to preach somewhere. So I was like, I need to preserve my voice. <laughs> Right, because normally the next day I can't talk because I'm like screaming so much. But you know, you guys did an awesome job, and you know, just as you know, what Ann Kid says that we're all champions. So come on, give yourself a pat on the shoulder. Like, Yay! You guys did a great job. I think just being together, the time that you guys put to practice and, you know, and just have fun and enjoy, and it was good. And thank God there was no injury <laughs> this year. It was good. Like, God really protected us, and it was good. So, yeah, looking forward to next year. Maybe I'll play a sport. Anna, if I play a sport, no one will be there to chair. Like, come on, I need to be the cheerleader. But um, with all fun aside, you know, today um, <clears throat> I'm here to, you know, thank you, worship team, for such an amazing worship. Uh, it's, you know, it's always so good to, uh, you know, after the worship, to, when you're worshiping, to know that God is in this place that he, you know, he aligns our spirit, he aligns everything. And I really hope that this message, um, that it is received, because, you know, it's a message that's been on my heart, and I, and I thought about it, and I'm like, you know, everybody talks about the prodigal son, and you hear about the prodigal son all the time, but, you know, there, there are two sons. There are actually two sons, and there was an older son and and sometimes people tend to think that uh the the younger son he is the one he disowned his family he disgraced his family but then the older son you know he was there he didn't leave so he's okay but you know after reading and looking at the older son i realized that the older son wasn't any better than the younger son you know it just that one was physically in the house you know and, and disobedient and the other one left and being disobedient so you know we're going to look into it and so we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 15 and so let's open in prayer Father God we thank you for who you are we pray dear Lord God for each and every one we pray for their hearts we pray dear Lord God that every heart will be open every heart uh, will be uh, soften, dear Lord God, that your word can penetrate, dear Lord God. Father God, I pray that your word will go forth like a double-headed sword. That, Heavenly Father, that every word that go forth will not return to you void, but let it accomplish what it's set forth to do. And so, Father God, I humble myself before you, Lord God. I ask you to use me as your mouthpiece, Father God. As I decrease, let you increase. Holy Spirit, take over, take charge, and I give every to you in Jesus name amen and um, yeah so let's look at Luke 15 so in Luke 15 it talks about something that was lost and was found we thought we heard about the woman with the coin you know she's she lost it and 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 she's looking all over when she found it she called everyone and she celebrated we you know it talks about um you know the lost sheep and 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 so the shepherd goes out and he finds it and and then the last part of it it's talking about you know the lost son that came back and so it's okay, I, I find that it seemed that it was okay that we celebrated the lost sheep in the, you know, in the first part, we celebrated the, lo the lost coin, but when we look at the third th 
thing that was lost, the son that was lost and found, they, the celebration wasn't as great. The, the, the second, the older son didn't celebrate. And so we're going to see what was in his heart. Why didn't he celebrate with him? And so we're going to look at verse uh, 25 to 30 at the NIV. And it says, meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed a fattened calf because he, he, because he has him back safely, safe and sound. The older brother came, became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered him, Father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your, or your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But he answered him, Father, look at the, oh, sorry, um, celebrated with, um, with his friends. And, sorry. I seem to cut off that part there. Um, okay. Yeah, so verse 30, and it says, But when, he, when this son of yours, whom squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. And, and so we're going to look at, you know, the son, the attitude of the older son. And we're going to look at the, the position of the older son. And we're going to look at the attitude of the older son. Because if you know, um, you know, just a little backstory, we know that Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. And, and, and here, you know, before in the beginning, they were grumbling, they were complaining that, oh, look at him, Jesus. They, he, you know, he's saying that he is the son of God, but he's, he's out here eating with, with sinners. He's out here, you know, hanging around with, 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 with all these people that, you know, they're not, you know, they're not the, the elders in the church. They're not in the synagogues. And those are the people that he was having dinner with. Those are the people he's hanging around with. And so Jesus realized what their motives were, that he realized that, you know, oh, they, this is what they're trying to do. They're there and they're criticizing him. So he gave them this parable to show them to say, you know, if somebody is lost, you know, they're the ones that we need to celebrate. It is the lost. And so that was the, the context. That's the context of this verse with the, with the two sons. It is that one son was lost and the father is celebrating because he was lost and now he's found. Right? But the older brother that should have, you know, as he's the elder, he's the older one. He should have understand the father's heart and celebrate also he starts criticizing the son and he starts having an attitude because, you know, here he goes away. He did all this stuff, you know, and I don't know if you've ever been in that place. You know, I mean, you think I've been there. I'm going to be honest. I've been there. I've, I've said that to God. I'm here. I'm doing this. I'm serving. I'm paying my tithes and this is happening, right? And look at this person. They're just doing whatever. They're not even serving. And it seems as if they're prospering. It seems as if they're not going through something. Right? And so we're all guilty of somewhat at some point putting ourselves, saying to God, well, look what I'm doing. Because that's what the older brother did. Right? And so we see that, you know, his position, he didn't have any reason to be upset, uh, you know, that the, uh, the brother came back because he probably thinking, ah, oh, the younger brother, because if you remember in the story, the younger brother said, give me my portion, let me go. I want to go and I'm going to do my own thing. Right. And so now 
the, uh, the older brother sees him come back and he's probably thinking, where is he going? Like, I'm not going to share my stuff now with him. Like, he goes out and he squanders. He's finished all his money and now he comes back. Now my father is going to go and do all this stuff. And what about me? What about mine? But if we look in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 21, 17, it says, um, he must, he must recognize, and this was talking about with, you know, with the two sons. Um, and so he says that he must recognize the right of his oldest son, the son of the wife he does not love by giving him a double portion. He is the first son of his father's vitality and the right of the firstborn being belonging to him. So we know that in the culture, in those days, the firstborn, the firstborn son has a double portion. It, so it didn't matter if, you know, the, if the, the, his, his brother came back because he already has a double portion. He doesn't have to worry. The younger son took his portion, but he had a double portion. When his father dies, he's the one that takes over. He will be the man of the house. He's the one. He has everything. And, but he wasn't looking at it like that. He was looking like, why is this guy back? You know, he goes out and he's doing all this stuff. Why is he back? And so, you know, we see that his attitude, and even when we look at the, the, the word older, Right When it says, meanwhile, the older son, when we look at the Greek word for older is presbyterus, right? And that's where we get the word presbyter from. We get the word elder in the church, in, the, in a church context, right? And so it provides, that person, the elder provides like an overseer, he oversees the church. And so a man that is mature, right, and is seasoned, and has good judgment, right? He's experienced. And so he perceives, they're thinking, oh, this is the older son, so he should have good judgment. He should be older. He should be mature, right? And so that's what they're looking at. But we see in his actions and his attitude that he wasn't that really, he wasn't really that mature. And if we look at it in church context, sometimes we can see people sitting in church for years. They even sometimes hold position and we think that they're matured, right? Until they get an experience like a, the, older, the older son experience. Until somebody else comes in and the pastor starts paying attention, you know, a lost person comes in, and now they start celebrating them, and now they start, you know, rallying around them, come on, let's do this, and then we really see the maturity of our Christian faith, how we react to that person that comes back, that comes back to the Lord, amen? If we have a brother or sister that goes astray, and they come back, we, as Christians, what we should do is celebrate them coming back. It's not looking and says, oh, look what they did. Oh, they made a mistake. Oh, you know, it shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't be the ones to chase them out, you know, let them feel uncomfortable because they're coming back and they made a mistake, right? And that's what the older son did to his younger brother. He realized that he made a mistake. But he perceived to be mature. He perceived to be the older one. But really, he was just as immature as his younger brother. You know, he, he was out in the field doing his father's business. Because that's what it says. It says, the son was in the field. And as he was coming in, so you know that he was out. He was doing the business of you know of the father and we can see that sometimes we can be in the church we can be in the church doing all the things you know the churchy stuff i'm serving i'm doing this i'm cleaning up but our heart is far away from the father and that's what we can see here with the older son 
He was in the house. He was there doing the work of the father, but his heart was far away from the father. His, you know, the, the, just like the younger son that it says that the younger son was, he was out, he was out in the world. This older son was out. His body was there at home, but his heart was away. His heart, his heart was already out in the world. And so we're going to look at, we see in verse 28, we're looking at his attitude. He said in verse 28, it says that the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his, he says, so his father went out to plead with him. He became angry and stubborn, right? And sometimes we make anger, the anger turns to bitterness. And that's when we sin. And so we can get upset. It's fine. We're not saying as Christians, you can't get upset. We can't say you can't be angry, right? But it is saying in Ephesians 4, 26, it says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Amen? T touch to your neighbor and says, wake up, don't get angry. <laughs> in case you're waking them up and they're going to get angry at you, Right? Don't let, it says, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. This brother, this older brother, right, he was, he was so angry, he was so mad that he was unwilling to go in the house. Now, if, if he saw, you think about it, like, I mean, every time I'm reading, reading this, I'm, I'm already picturing what's going on. You know, so in my mind, and I mean, and some people probably be way more creative than me, but you know, in my little mind, I'm thinking, you know, like they're there and he can hear music going on and he's walking and he's probably wondering and he probably was excited. Oh, wow. Maybe the neighbors are having a party, you know? And so he was excited going in and thinking up, oh, I'm coming in long day from work and you know, neighbors having a party. And as he's getting closer, he's realizing the party's at his house. Right? And so now he's thinking, wait, what's going on? Like, I didn't know about this. Right? It's only me and dad home. What is he having a party for? And if he saw the, you know, the servant outside, because remember it says in, you know, in the verse that he saw that when he was asking, he was inquiring, he wanted to know what's going on. So it wasn't like he's passing and he sees someone say, hey, what's going on? And, you know, keep going. He just keep asking, like, what's going on? He really needed to know, wait, something is going on. He's pressing in and he's asking, he's inquiring what's going on, right? That mean people were outside. I mean, this is in my head, right? Come on. So parties going on, people are inside, people are outside. And he decides that, wait, this is at my house. I'm not going inside. Can you imagine the embarrassment for his father that is there, that he's outside saying, hmm, I'm not going inside. What's going on? Oh, this son of yours come home and now you're having a party. And so in front of the crowd, he was already throwing a, tantr a, a temper tantrum. And we know when we have kids acting up in front of people, how embarrassing that is, right? So can you imagine, so he was already thinking the younger son embarrassed the father, but I'm here, I didn't embarrass him. But he's outside, he says that he was unwilling to go inside the house. So he already disgraced his father, right? He did the same thing. And so we see that same, as I said before, that same thing of, Oh, they're having a party for this, this, this person. Oh, they didn't realize that. Oh, they left and went to this other church and then they came back. And now that they came back, they're having a party for them. I'm not going. Right? And we can do that. As Christians, we can look at it and say, I'm not going in. I'm not going in the party. And we see that, you know, with the father came in and this same anger 
this same anger that it is saying, it is not just, like I said, it's not just being, oh, I'm, I'm a little upset, you know, because this is happening. This is the same anger that was used in Matthew 18, 34, where, you know, where, where the master, he had already, the master had already released, gave up, you know, said, I, 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 your debts have been forgiven, you know, the, that's the backstory, you know, the masters, you know, he had, um, you know, these slaves and they, they owed him money and he, he went ahead and he, he pardoned them and says, it's okay. The one that owed him the most, he pardoned him. And then you would think that he would show the same mercy to the one that owed him money. And he went and he just said, oh, I want my money back. And he almost killed the guy just to get his money back. And he was just pardoned for way more than what this guy owed him. And so the master said, he says, in anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. That's that same anger that this, this brother had for his, for his father and his brother. It was that same kind of anger that he end up, he just refused to go in. And we see there where it says, so his father came out and plead with him. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you know, my kids, I, I don't know, maybe I'm like a tough love mom kind of person because if you are out there acting up, I'm leaving you outside to stay act up. I'm not running after you. I'm sorry. I don't, any other parent would run after them, begging them to come in? Oh, good. Oh, oh, thank you, Kuya. I thought it was only me. I was like, my gosh, I'm so mean. <laughs> but I'm thinking, if you're out there acting up, I'm saying to you, your brother is here, let's come and celebrate, and you're out there acting up, I'm not going to come out there and plea with you. Too bad for you, Mr. Party. Right? Not this father. He loves us so much, so hard, and so deep that the father himself went out, and he says that he was pleading with him. Right? He was pleading. The father is so personal because he could have said, tell one of the, the, the servants and says, hey, go out there and tell him to come inside. But the father didn't do that. The father went outside himself and he was pleading with him. And that word pleading means parakaleo. And para means beside, right? To be close, close to the person. And, and kaleo is to call, to make a call. So Parakaleo, it is saying that he was up close and personal. He probably went there, you know, like these little kids, you know, like I have my little niece and then when she doesn't want to do something, I got a bribe. I'm like, come on, you got to do, just let's go. I'll give you chocolate later. You know, you got to try bribe, bribe them into doing this thing, right? And so that's sort of what the father went out there like, just come on, let's go. Come on, you can come inside, right? It's that same thing, you know, where in, in Romans 12, 1, where Paul says, therefore, I urge you. Like, that's that same kind of urge that the father is coming and saying, we need you to come in. Just come inside, right? And he's like, no, I am not going inside, and then he didn't just stop there, right? He didn't just stop there. He decides now to tell the father, you know, hey, look, look. And so we see that this is the motive that he have. And this is sometimes we have wrong motives when we serve. Verse 29, it says that he answered his father. So he didn't just say, that's it, I'm not going in. He starts talking back to the father. And back then, I mean, even now, talking back, it's a no-no, right? And now he's talking back to the father. And he says, look, like, how oh, dare you? I don't know what I would do in this case. Look, like you're already acting up and then you're going to tell me to look like, hey, you look, you look, you need to come in now, right? But no, he says to the father, look, and now he's going on. All these years, drama queen, right? 
all these years, I have been slaving, right? I've been slaving for you, never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. See how dramatic he is? First of all, all the goats belong to him. It's his, his goats, right? So why did he need the father to give him a goat? If he wanted a goat, he could have just killed a goat and have fun with his, with his, you know, with his friends. But you go to see that a lot of times, as, even as Christians, we want to do our own thing, but you want the leader to tell you, oh, you're doing this wrong. So that if anything, you're cleared. It's not me. It's the leader told me I was wrong and the leader says, right? That's what, sometimes that's what it is. We know that we're doing something wrong. And what we do is that we want somebody else to tell it to us so that we can clear ourselves and we can blame the leader or the pastor that, oh, they're the one that corrected and said that, right? The goat belonged to him. But he's going to say, oh, look, I think he wanted to be just like the younger brother. I think he wanted to be as bold as the younger brother that just picked up his stuff, you know. But he wasn't bold enough. He wanted someone. I have a niece and a nephew, right? And when one wants something, they would tell the other one to go and tell me, you know. And then they'll come and he'll say, oh, I, 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 but I like freezies. <laughs> You know, he's not asking me for the freezy. Like, oh, I like freezies. Or, oh, my mom always buys me freezies. And I'm like, what do you want? Do you want a freezy? You know? And he's like, oh, yeah. But really, it wasn't him. It's his sister that really wants the freezy. But she's not bold enough to come and ask for the freezy. So she sends the younger one. And so it's the same thing as this guy. I'm sure when he was there, he used to have party and have, you know, kill goat and all that stuff because the younger one was there and he would blame and say, oh, it's the younger one. Now the younger one's gone and he don't have the guts to go to the father and say, hey, I'm going to have a party with my friends, right? So he changes his position. If you notice, he changes position from a son to a slave. He says here, all these years I've been slaving. So now he just changes position from being a son to a slave. Just like that. And we, it's, it's very easy for us to do the same thing as Christians. Is that we do things as if we're slaves. We don't serve. We don't, we don't serve with love. We don't do it because we, it gives us joy to have a life group. It doesn't give you joy to come in early and have to set up and do the worship and all of that stuff. It doesn't give you joy. You're just doing it because you're told. And that spirit becomes a spirit of a hireling. It becomes a spirit of an orphan. It becomes a spirit of a slave. Because you're not doing it out of love because I am passionate for the Lord and I want to do this. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and says, be a son and not a slave. When you serve, you serve out of love. You know, we do not serve, we do not act, and we do not function as slaves. We function from a place of sonship, knowing that our heart is, the, we have the heart of the Father, right? You're in the house. He's in the house, and he should have the heart of the Father. You know, I, for me, I have, um, you know, I have two kids, and one of them, I call it, you know, the prodigal because, you know, she's gone off doing her own thing. And my heart breaks every time I think about that she's not here. She's not home. And, and, and you know, you would think if I have my other child with me, my other, my, that child should realize my heart for their sibling. Yeah, they should understand and say and know how my heart is for 
that child that is not there. And this older son, he is with his dad. And I know this is how, for years, this, this younger son is gone. They have no clue where he is. They have no clue what's going on in his life. They have no idea what's going on, right? But when we look, we see that when, when he heard that his, his brother was there, you thought that he would be excited and he would share the heart of the father. But he didn't. His motives were wrong. His motives was self-centered. And all he was doing was thinking about himself. And so sometimes we can come and Sunday after Sunday, we can come in and we can get into a routine that we're just here in the house, but our heart is way far from the father. We do not have the same heart as the father. And that's why in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of the father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Like, ouch. Who would want to be going through every, our lives and then to hear those words? How sad. And so I know a lot of times, you know, people, you know, you would hear people say, oh, follow your heart. You know, if your heart says follow your heart. But our hearts are deceitful. Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward every person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Everything that we do the things that's in our heart. Sometimes things come out and people may think, oh yeah, that, you know, he was just mad because, you know, he probably came home and he see this is what the father was doing. And so he probably was just mad. But it says it's out of the heart is the deceitful things that's in the heart that comes out. And if he didn't have anger and bitterness in his heart, that wouldn't have came out. Amen. So everything that we do, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So, so, whatever, so whether we eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We must allow God, if we're in that place and we get there, sometimes we get angry. Sometimes situation cause our hearts to get hardened. But if we're at that place where we said, Lord, we give it to him and we say to him, we allow him to change our heart, change our thoughts, change our motives, because there is still hope. There's still hope for us. But the hope stops when we become like this brother, because he was so self-righteous and judgmental. If we look here in in, when we look and we see in, 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 in verse 30, when, when he says, oh, look, this son of yours, right? Remember before, this is the second time now he's now take, pulling himself away from the family, right? The first part, he says, oh, I was slaving for you. So he now became a slave. Imagine, because remember, it's his place. It's his land. All the stuff that he's doing, he's taking care is for him. But he said, oh, I'm been slaving. And then now he says, oh, this son of yours. He doesn't say my brother. He said, this son of yours. He was out there and he was with prostitutes and he was, how did he know that? Because they didn't know where he was. Right? I mean, we know it because we read it. But he didn't know that. 
So he already start judging the brother. Or maybe that's what he wanted to do. So he's saying all the things that he would have done if he was out in the far land. Right? He says, oh, look, this son of yours, he took your money. He squandered your money. He was out there with prostitutes. And then now he comes back and now you want to. And so he was so judgmental. Because he had no idea. He started judging. Right? He started judging. And, and, and in first, first John 1, 8, it says, If we claim that we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Before we start judging the unbeliever, before we start judging the backslider, before we start judging others, let us look at ourselves and test our hearts, test our motives, test where we are. Why are you doing the things that you're doing? What are your motives? Do you, are you just doing it so people can see you and say, oh yeah, you're doing a great job when your motive's not right? Because that's what they were doing. Everybody else was looking at the older son and says, yeah, you're doing a great job. You didn't leave your dad. You're here with him. But his heart was so far away from his dad. He didn't, he didn't look at it and say, here, I understand. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't get it why you killed the fattened calf. You know, because it could have been mine. I was planning to do something with that calf. You know, I mean, he could have said, you know, you, dad, why did you take that one? I wanted that one, right? He could have said to him, you know, maybe I don't agree with you, dad, but yes, I am celebrating with you because my brother is home. We may not, sometimes we may not agree with the way, you know, because everybody does things differently. So sometimes we may not agree with the way the leader does something. Maybe we not agree with the way the pastor does something. But we, we say, you know what? But I'm with you. I'm celebrating with you because I understand where you're coming from. And if that son had that heart to say, you know what? I get it. But instead he starts judging he starts saying all these things and he starts um, being judgmental to his brother. He gets upset with his dad and he disrespected his dad. But his father is so loving. And so even on the little, you know, I, I said, I told them in Brampton, I said, I think I need to, after this, I need to do, do a message on the father, the heart of the father. Because imagine the father, how, you know, he has two kids treating him like garbage and he still loved them both and plead with them. And so wherever we are, no matter what it is, whatever place we are, whether we identify ourselves as the prodigal that has gone, that has done stuff, you know, and, and, and now want to come back to the father, or we're like the older son that, that is sitting there, you know, and, 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 and saying, I'm not coming inside. Are you going to stay outside? And even in this story, Jesus didn't tell them if the son ever went inside. That's left up to our imagination. That's left up to us. If we are the older son, are you going to choose to come inside are you gonna make that choice are you gonna say I'm sorry I I understand your heart I understand the heart of God and so I'm gonna come inside and I'm gonna celebrate because this backslider came back this unbeliever came in this person that maybe not be the greatest, you know, is asking you questions, is asking you to do something for them. And so you're going to look and you're going to say, I'm going to step in. I'm going to go inside. 
So as I conclude in the end, it says in Romans 8, 15, this is the, the passion version. It says, and you did not receive that spirit of religious duty, right? That's not what God gives you. He doesn't give you religious duties. It says, it doesn't give you a spirit of religious duties, leading you back into fear of never being good enough. But you have received a spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God. Like, thank God for the heart of the father. Amen. The father wants to restore us back into the family as sons. We are not slaves. We're not orphans. We're not hirelings. If we confess, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He is able to give us a new heart. If we go before him, if we go before God and ask him to forgive us, to cleanse us, to change our mind, to change our motives. It says in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Because of the love of the father. He is at the door and he's pleading for us to come in. He is at the door saying, come in. You may not understand why I'm doing this. You may not understand my heart, but come in and learn from me. Come in and know my heart. And so as I close, I'll just ask you to stand and we'll just go before the Lord and we're just going to, you know, maybe ask the Lord to check our hearts, to check our motives, to check where we are. Why are we doing things where we are? You know, like this son, are you going to stay outside? Are you going to stay outside and complain about the things that the father is doing? Are you going to stay on the outside and look and, and say all the things that can go wrong? Or are you going to look and say, Lord, forgive me for what I have made it. Forgive me for the reason why I was doing things. Cleanse my heart. Take away that heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I come before you, Lord. And as we come before you, Lord, and we confess and we repent, dear Lord God, we're asking you to extend your forgiveness, dear Lord God, to each and every one of us. Father God, that we will receive your forgiveness. We will receive, Lord God, your love, your cleansing power, your cleansing touch, Lord God, that you will change our heart from hard hearts to a heart of flesh that you're able, dear Lord God, to mold. Father God, help us to walk in our inheritance that we do not walk as slaves but that we know who we are that we know that we are your son that we know that the double portion belongs to us dear lord god i pray father god right now that you will touch every heart that you will uproot every spirit of anger, that you will uproot every spirit of bitterness, that you will uproot, dear Lord God, every spirit of judgment, Lord God, every spirit of self-righteousness, Lord God, that you will uproot it in the name of Jesus. That we will walk in with pure hearts, that we will step in to the party, that we will celebrate, that we will understand your heart, dear Lord God, and that we will celebrate, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your love, your unchanging love. I 
come against the Lord God any spirit of shame I ask you to remove it right now in the name of Jesus and I just release love I release your love dear Lord God oh we thank you Lord God for who you are we thank you Father God that you call us your son that you are there that you come out that you're so personal that you come out to plea with us that you come out to be alongside us help us to be humble dear Lord God remove every every spirit of pride dear Lord God and help us to be humble Lord God that we will we be humble enough to receive your love and so father I thank you may your word take root in our hearts that our hearts will be open to receive your word and that our minds will be obedient to walk in your ways and so we just thank you Lord God and we seal with your blood in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you